Welcome to my workshop. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out Longer B1 with 30 watt module. That's the most powerful laser I had in my workshop. So I'm really going to be interesting. What will be the results of the tests we're going to do today? So without further ado, let's crack on with the video. 30 watts of power. Right then, so that's what you get in the box itself. I've unpacked everything and I'm ready to assemble. I just want to take you through quickly the assembly process to show you how easy and quick it is. For the first step, we're going to need the X axis. As you can see, it's the one where we mount the laser head itself and the sides as well. OK, one, the left one has got all the wires in it. And at the back of it, there's a special notch for uh, the back wire to go onto. So remember that to make sure to sort your cables out when you're going to be putting this together. OK, now basically we just feed the sides through the X axis, as I'm showing you now. Obviously, you need to do that on both sides. OK, now it's time for the front and the back of the machine. For that, we're going to need uh, screws from step two. OK, they're clearly marked and we just slide in the uh, sides to the front and the back and just basically use the bolts to put everything together. Easy and quick to do. Let's install the belts now, shall we? It could be a bit of a fiddly process with this one as we need to take it through uh, this cogged um, wheel over here. However, if you take the plastic sides, the plastic covers, it's a really, it's a doddle to do, no problems at all. And then feed it through the pulley that's located at the front of the machine. Uh, over here, you do have to fish it out just a little bit. Now at this point, I'm actually not going to install this. I'm going to leave it until I'll do the other side. And the main reason for it is because we need to make sure the X axis is running straight. OK, so as you can see, I'm holding the X axis to the back of the machine and I'm putting the belts on. As the machine is still upside down, we can check the tension on um, the belts themselves. If the tension on them is too loose or it's too high, then you can adjust it quite easily with the adjustment option that's located near the front of the machine uh, with an Allen key as I'm doing it right now. At this point, I would also suggest checking the wheels on the X axis and on the carriage that houses the laser module itself. If the wheels are a little bit too loose, you can amend the tension with the key, making sure that the wheels are not spinning freely. However, also that they don't have too much tension on them. Now it's time for the laser module. It's a big heavy unit. It does have really cool features like integrated air assist, as you can see here, and a hole the straight away for the hose. At the back of the machine, you do have a holder for the electric wires that you need to connect to this module. On the back as well, you've got this retractable feet to set up your focal point. Absolutely fantastic. It's all magnetic out of the way when it's not in use. Great stuff. And it's easy to install on the frame itself with just one screw. So you just slide it in the carriage and use the screw to secure it in place. One of great safety features is this panoramic filter glass that can effectively filter about 99% of the laser light. However, now it's time to install the limit switches. Obviously, they're all clearly marked. It's easy to install. You just use two little screws to mount them on. Connecting all the wiring is ever so simple. Everything is clearly marked and more or less everything fits in its own place. So there's no room for error. As you can see, I've just installed the limit switch and the motherboard. Now the uh, large cable that's on the side, again, you are connecting the limit switch, the motor on the X axis and the laser head itself. Now at this point, I'm going to do a bit of cable management and I've installed the air hose already. To get to the last wire, we need to flip our laser over. And as you can see, it's right at the back at the uh, back motor just over there. 
Now the feet of this laser can actually be adjusted to make sure the laser is level on your work surface. Very cool feature there. This is the USB cable that will go to your laptop. We just connect it at the front. Power brick at the front as well. Straight away we can connect the air hose to the air pump that we already installed to our laser module. I have to say it's a fairly quiet air pump. Maybe thanks to the rubber feet it has, it's not transferring any vibrations to the workbench. And we connect it directly to the frame of the laser. It's a very interesting um, option here, guys, where you actually control the air pump via light burn, so the software itself. However, you also do get the option to control the air volume um, through the valve that's located here. Right, let's talk about some important stuff when it comes to this laser, the safety features. And now that's the um, uh, safety alert. So if something goes wrong, it goes red and it flashes and it gives sound. Then you've got the reset button. After that, you've got the key lock. Basically, if you're sharing your workspace with somebody else, you can make sure nobody else will use your laser. Next, we've got the on off switch and on the other side of the front of the frame, we've got the emergency stop button and it does exactly what it says. A bit more uh, advanced safety feature for this laser is if you, for example, accidentally knocked your laser, okay, so it loses the uh, stable position, it will stop working. Same if the uh, module itself will remain in one position for more than 15 seconds, it will automatically turn itself off and zero it out. So preventing any potential fires and also it does have flame protection flame alert so anything goes wrong in my opinion you're definitely covered with this machine and to be fair i think it's one of the best if not the best in this price bracket when it comes to all the safety features right as you've seen putting the machine together should take you 15 maybe 20 minutes with everything checking out the tensions of the pulleys and everything like that so it's quite easy and simple to put together everything fits absolutely perfectly you know the quality of the components is great now i just want to mention uh, one thing guys the module 30 watts the work area that you've got with this laser is 450 by 440 so it's actually bigger work area than most common uh, laser engravers and cutters in this price bracket and exactly the price bracket i don't think there's many lasers especially with i think this quality that will offer a value to power ratio and its abilities. So what type of test have I got prepared? Well, first of all, we'll see how well it engraves. Uh, then we'll see how good it actually cuts. And this is really something that I'm looking forward to. The cutting test will start from four millimeter plywood, but with 30 watt module, I think we can go a little bit thicker than that. So the second cutting test will be at six millimeter plywood. So we'll see what type of performance we can actually expect from this, well, on paper, very powerful module. So let's jump into it and have a look how it performs. Now, before we're actually gonna start any work, we need to establish the focal point for our laser head. And as I showed you before, we've got this little magnetic foot just over there. So I'm going to release the screw, drop it down to the material, secure the screw, and we are ready to go. I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you to the sponsors of today's video, which is longer themselves. Thank you for providing this fantastic machine for testing, reviewing, and some cool project work in the future. So, longer, thank you for being the partners to my channel. Right then, let's have a look at the results of our engraving test. Now, this time I've actually started from 4000 millimeters per minute, as I thought this laser would be way too powerful for any other lower setting. And I think I was absolutely right. Look at that, 4000 with 100% power almost went through. Now, at the top, I'm missing two tiles. That's because the software didn't allow me to add two more. But you can clearly see at the maximum speed of this machine, which is 36,000 millimeters per minute, you do get fantastic engraving quality. 
obviously look at that how deep it actually went even with the fastest speeds it's absolutely insane how powerful this laser module is look at that absolutely fantastic results which mean you can go a lot quicker when engraving okay now it's time for the first cutting test as i mentioned before it's four millimeter plywood and let's have a look at the results i think uh, we're not going to be surprised 30 watts is a lot of power and yeah there you go it managed to cut out all the tiles even at 500 millimeters per minute at 70 percent power okay so let's have a look how good of a performance we'll get on six millimeter plywood well we've got few tiles are we gonna be able to pop them out yeah this one is a little bit difficult i think it got stuck but we managed to get it out and that's what we got six millimeter plywood 400 millimeters per minute 80 percent power is the maximum we can do here but still absolutely fantastic performance tell you what let's go even thicker eight millimeter plywood just so you can see i'm just using my calipers to prove that this is eight millimeters and let's have a look at the results i'm super curious with this one let's check it out well a few tiles already popped out it's actually quite difficult to get them out because it's such a thick material look at that eight millimeters of plywood let's have a look how many more yeah is that coming now that's it that's not too bad for eight millimeters 200 millimeters per minute and 90 percent power not bad at all let's check what thickness we can actually tackle with this machine so i've got 17 millimeter pine and 20 millimeter pine board let's check how many passes we'll need to cut through those okay first of all this 17 millimeters and i think is it possible yes i think it is two passes we managed to cut through 17 millimeter pine board in only two passes okay it's not burned too much um quite good nice quality i do get a little bit overburn at the back of it but it's not too bad overall nice and clean cut okay let's check out the 20 millimeter pine board how many passes will it take to cut through that? Let's have a look. So as you've seen, it only took four passes. Four passes to cut through 20 millimeter thick pine board. Absolutely insane performance here, guys slight overburn at the back but nothing major just really good performance overall now it's time for the ceramic tile test let's have a look what type of performance we can get over here the settings are 400 millimeters per minute 100 percent power and check it out i think we got quite good performance here guys the b1 30 watts absolutely fantastic quite deep as well with 400 millimeters per minute very nice very nice okay let's engrave steel 600 millimeters per minute 100 percent power let's have a look and again great performance look at the quality of the engraving and it's actually quite uh, fairly deep to the touch as well but uh, yeah the sharpness and just the overall quality of the engraving on steel it's fantastic and 600 millimeters per minute very quick how about engraving slate and not done that before i think uh, so let's have a look what type of performance we can expect here and quite an interesting result actually guys um that gives me a few ideas for a few projects that looks great Right, let's test out the true speed of this tool. 36,000 millimeters per minute, 100% power. Engraving photo of myself. And I think we can agree, absolutely fantastic performance yet again. The quality, look at that around the glasses, the eyes, you know, really good solid detail here from a photo as well with 36,000 millimeters per minute. Very, very nice. 
And there you have it, guys. We went through several tests to see what this machine is actually capable of doing. And I really have to say, I am very impressed with this 30 watt module. This is the most powerful laser I've had in my workshop. Now, we went through the test with the cutting test, eight millimeter plywood, 200 millimeters per minute, and it went down to 90% power and it managed to do the job. However, I think I need to put this in perspective to show you how powerful <laughs> this laser actually is. Now, a few weeks ago, I was actually testing a, the same machine, but with 20 watt module. So 10 watt difference. What is the difference? I'm gonna show you right now. First of all, that's the 20 watt module, uh, four millimeter plywood. Okay, so few tiles left. Whereas with our 30 watt, all of them are gone. It cut them through with no issues at all, okay? So quite a difference. So that's six tiles difference. However, the most significant difference we can see on six millimeter plywood. So this is the 20 watt module, okay? So it stops at 300 millimeters per minute, 100% power. However, with the 20 watt module, check that out. Right, it stops at 400 millimeters per minute at 70% power. Massive difference in power. So as you can see, the pure performance-based difference is absolutely huge. But what does all that mean? Well, it basically means you can do your tasks faster. So you don't have to use 200 or 300 millimeters per minute you can go up to 400 millimeters per minute to cut out your project. And that could be saving you up to 30% of the time. And similar thing applies to engraving. If you're engraving a picture, anything like that, it can take an hour on, for example, the 20 watt module. However, with the far greater power capability of the 30 watt module you can reduce that time by increasing the speed and saving yourself at least 30 or 40 even percent of the time for the project itself so as you can see it's a massive time saver to have that extra power especially when you're running your business time is money we all know that but the greatest thing about this particular machine, the longer B1 with 30 watt module, is that I don't think you're gonna find on the market anything that's more or less in the same quality bracket and in the same price bracket. It's very, very affordable compared to its competitors. As you've seen, I've run a few tests today. Hopefully it gave you a good understanding of what this machine can actually do. However, I do have a project upcoming with this machine to see its more capabilities, if you wish. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that future video and make sure to like my video if you enjoyed today's content. But on my channel, I already got a massive playlist of really cool videos when it comes to lasers, projects with lasers, 3D printing, but also woodworking and general DIY and workshop upgrades. So if you went to that, I've got some really cool playlists just over here for you. So click on those and hopefully I'll see you on my next video. Take care.